Hey, good morning and welcome to our blog, Puts Ponds and Gardens. It's spring here in Michigan, and you know what that means. It's time to clean out ponds. I'm Dan Put, owner of Puts Ponds and Gardens. So what we're going to showcase today in this video is some of the different techniques that we do for cleaning out ponds. So we're here at my old house and we're going to be cleaning out the pondless waterfall. This was shut down all winter and whoa, this is one of the reasons why you really want to clean out these water features and pondless waterfalls. I really wish you guys could smell this, but that water that's sitting down here in the basin all winter long, it stinks. I can, oh, I got to get out of here. But the guys are going to be draining this out, rinsing down the entire stream and then, uh, filling up with fresh water again. Let's head out to the backyard and show you what we're going to do there. So this pond's been up and running all winter long. Running a little slow. Basket might be full right now. A lot of excessive algae because Mother Nature makes algae cold water plant. Fish are all hiding. I can hear the pump starving so It's got enough water it's just the basket is full so we want to get that cleaned out water's pretty clear as you can see there is excessive algae growth here so we're going to rinse all that down we'll get this all cleaned out for them one of the other things that we're going to be cleaning out here will be this little fountain here a millstone fountain if you remember i had a three-tiered fountain that was here but this one that's on the uh, Aquascape Aqua Basin 45, this one's going to be drained out and we'll start off with some fresh water as well. I think I hear the guys coming. So we've got our discharge hoses, we've got our clean out pumps, hose reel, our tanks, this is a toolbox. So we got milk crates up on top, extra hoses, we got waders, vacuums, more Rakes. milk crates, rakes, fishnets, muck boots. So one of the first things Zach does is he shuts down the waterfalls. He's got his tank set up. He's got his discharge hoses inside the pond. The fish are starting to come out. So he'll fill up these tanks with pond water. And then one of them will be for fish. And then the other one will probably be primarily for a rinse tank. So we'll drop a pump in here and rinse with 4,800 gallons of water. Rinse everything to another pump and then discharge it further out into the lawn so they're bringing in all their equipment getting everything all set up going through the process now we'll use a hose reel to connect a lot of different um, things in since we'll have two pumps here um, we'll be able to plug in both pumps vacuums so one of the things that we'll do is you want to protect the fish we don't want them getting sucked into a pump so that's what the milk crates are four we'll drop our clean out pumps into a milk crate we'll take a mesh net bag wrap it around the milk crate so that way the fish can't get into it occasionally you have to go through because small debris will clog up the mesh bag and then we want to keep it clear so we can get the water out as quickly as possible so once the one tank is filled up well then we'll switch over to the next tank over here once that one's filled up then any remaining water will be discharged out to the catch basin. If it's a very large pond, we'll set up multiple tanks, like maybe four or five of the tanks. The fish are still in hiding right now. Oh, we got one little one out, one little spigot. He came out, he wants to see what's going on. 
So we'll check the lighting, make sure all the lights are good. If not, we'll ask the homeowner if they want the lights replaced, if they're not uh, still under warranty. But all the string algae and whatnot, that'll all get rinsed down, collected up, and taken out. We don't like the power wash, even though most people will think that this algae right here um, is a bad thing. It's actually a sign of a healthy ecosystem. Um, you can see that the water is clear. Um, gravel, you, still visible. Water being clear, we want to put that water back in the pond. But one of the reasons why we don't want to get rid of this algae here, now the big thick hairy stuff, we'll, we'll rinse that off and that'll come off real easy. But this other algae that's on the rocks, that's a biofilm. That's the largest plant in the system. And it's what actually keeps the water clear. That's Betty White coming out. My daughter's fish, Betty White. So once the water level's down to about six, eight inches, what the guys are doing now is they're transferring the fish into the tanks. The tank water will go back into the pond so that way the fish can acclimate to it and the pond can uh, rebound a lot quicker in the springtime. The rest of the pond water will be filled up uh, via garden hose and then the homeowners will shut that off. If it's more than 25% that the pond needs to top off to get it running again, um, the chlorinator will be added to the pond so that way uh, there's it gets rid of the chlorine and chloramines. During springtime it's a great idea to use uh, fertilizer tablets and push them in to where the uh, water lilies are. That'll fertilize those plants for the entire season. So the pump gets removed, the skimmer gets uh, emptied out, all vacuumed up inside, and then when the guys are done, the pump will be put back in, the rack right here will be placed back in, there's a net that goes on top of the rack, and then the basket, and we'll button that all up. So up on top, we have a biological filter. In that biological filter is two mats. So they only get cleaned out once a year. We never power wash them, but what the guys do is they'll put a pump inside the pond and then they rinse these out really good. Also inside the biofalls is a bag full of uh, bio balls. And those get rinsed out as well with pond water. We don't wanna use city water we want to keep as much of those bacteria as active and alive. So this is the same process of any other pond that we clean out. Brian and Derek already have the pond drained out. They're rinsing it really hard. Fish are in the tanks. This water is a little bit more green than what we like to see going back in there. So we're going to rinse it heavy and then start it with fresh water. Make sure we dechlorinate this 100%. We'll add some flocculant, uh, some rapid clear to this so that way um, It'll clear up even quicker. I really like to get existing pond water back into there, but uh, we don't want to start off the spring with green water either. Let's watch the process, how the guys are going to pump from our supply tank through a two inch line 
with our fire, fire hose connection at the end. That's going to go to the discharge pump that pumps it way back there into another catch basin. So he starts on that end of the pond and he rinses it all the way down here. You rinse down your shelves first, down to the bottom of the pond. Then you start at the far end of the pond and rinse down to your clean out pump here. Just time and processes and that's what we found over 36 years that works the best for us. You can do it with a garden hose. Heavy organics, even dirt will flow a little bit of the way and then flow and then settle back down so once it settles back down you gotta lift them back up with the power of the water to get it to go to your pump we found by setting up supply tank and use the 4800 gallon per hour clean out pump that's the most efficient way for us to get these things cleaned out so if we didn't do them that way what would end up happening is we'd get one pond done a day doing it with a garden hose Ask any homeowner that's done a pond clean out by themselves. They know that it takes a day, sometimes the weekend to do it. We don't have the luxury of having that much time. We've got 200 plus clean outs to do and we want to get them done fast, efficient, and roll on to the next. All right, so let's go head back over to the Zach's job and let's see how they're coming along with their projects. All right, so they got this all rinsed out right now. A um, little bit of water underneath the liner, so it, it's creating a bubble, and that's why you see exposed liner here. That'll get covered up as soon as they're done rinsing. Once they're done rinsing, it's time to fill it up with the pond water and get this thing going again. All right, so the pond's all cleaned out. Back to where it needs to be. Fish are out swimming around. 